Hey everyone, welcome to Foxhole Studios. Uh, my name's Chad and this is our SSL 4000, which is what this video is going to be about. Uh, we've had ours for about a year now and um, we've got it working how we like it, our workflow is all sorted. Um, so I thought I'd make this video. Um, there wasn't a lot of information out there, particularly videos on the console when, when I was looking at buying ours. So I thought, Let's have a look at it and maybe it'll help you guys if, um, if you're looking at buying one or just for your general knowledge of how these um, old consoles work. So yeah, let's get stuck in. Okay, so the first thing we're going to look at is these mono uh, channel strips here. Uh, so starting from the top all the way through the bottom. The way these channel strips work is that um, your outputs from your multi-track come in to the patch bay and they're split into the channel input line and also the monitor line so basically you've got a parallel signal coming through these these strips that can be routed into different directions we've got a line input a microphone input which are accessible at the patch bay uh, you've got a flip which flips between the line and the mic selector, so depending on if you're having signal come in off your uh, multi-track, your door, or if you're having it come off your mics from the control room. Um, got a phase flip <clears throat> and a 20 dB cut. Uh, you've also got this subgroup button, which basically means that you can use that channel as a subgroup when it's selected on another channel so, for example, that was um, channel 19. If we wanted channel 19, 19 and 20 to be a subgroup for, say, a drums, uh, then anything that was sent to group 19 and 20 in the matrix section will automatically route into 19 and 20 here. Okay, next we'll have a look at the dynamic section. So on each channel, you can select to have the dynamic section on the channel input, which as we talked about is um, accessible on the patch bay, or you can have it go on the monitor. So as we talked about before, there's two parallel signals coming in onto those channel strips and you can choose um, for both the dynamics and the EQ section um, where you want those modules to sit in the signal chain. Uh, there's a ratio up the top threshold here. Uh, this is your release pull for fast. You've also got threshold for your gate or expander and this is your range and release here. Again you pull for fast release. Next we'll have a look at the EQ and the filters. So here you've got a um, high and low cut shelvings. Here this split button has the ability to basically split these filters here from the main EQ. So that if you wanted the main EQ, for example, on the channel input, so say you're mixing um, a snare drum, uh, but then you are sending that snare drum to a parallel compressor or something through the uh, using the monitor input. You can actually filter that parallel um, send as well as still using the EQs for your main mix, if that makes sense. So you've got your high frequency boost and cut here you can turn it into a bell uh, if it's not on bell it's just a big shelf um, and you've got two parametric mid ranges here and then a low frequency again you can choose bell or if you don't it's a shelf and these again they're selectable so you can patch them in on the channel input or the monitor input there's also other modes that you can use by having these two put in or all three 
or one of them in it becomes a side chain to the compressor okay next we've got the Q section so these buttons are pressable um, when they're pressed in they're engaged and on which is very handy for when you've set all of your um, levels that you don't want to have to move around and you can just turn things on and off just by pressing them in which is great uh, each so there's a stereo cue and that's your pan for that stereo cue and then you've got four monos they're all switchable to pre fade or post fade depending on how you're using them uh, you can also send any of these pots to the small fader at the bottom and you can you can select multiple small faders so that once you've got a blend of reverbs and delays you can just ride one fader uh, to bring that up and down next we've got the group output section so this uh, group part here is a trim uh, for all signals that are routed to that particular group uh, and the direct button basically sends whatever is on this channel to the number of the channel on the group so for example this is channel 18 switched in it will automatically route to group 18 on the patch bay and next we have this float button so this is quite a good tool um, it takes a while to get your head around um, actually calling it float is a bit confusing in itself um, but when it's pressed it basically disconnects the signal from the main mix bus um, so your large fader um, and sends it up to the routing matrix instead so on the routing matrix you can then send that to multiple places at once um, to different subgroups or back into the main mix if that's what you want to do as well also in the group section you can choose to feed the small fader with either the group input on the patch bay or the tape input on the patch bay by default with none of them pressed in it's coming in off the tape in next we've got the small fader uh, by default this routes up to the routing matrix and then is distributed to wherever that's um, assigned to uh, once the float button is pressed in the small fader becomes disconnected and that's in fact the large fader that is routed up to the matrix so with the small fader if the input is pressed in it's getting its source pre any um, processing from dynamics or eq and also pre the large fader so the large fader doesn't affect it uh, if they're both pressed in it gets its signal post processing so the dynamics and filters are engaged but it's still pre the large fader and if it's just the output button then it gets its source from after all of dynamics filtering and also after the large fader there's a solo and a cut button for the small fader um, as well as a uh, there's a left and right pan pot here and if this button is engaged you can select to send that to the front bus or the rear bus on the quad bus and last but not least we have the main large fader so this is um, controlling or the VCA control for any signal coming in on the channel in and the large fader is also assignable to one through eight of a group VCA or it can be independent um, and independent just means that uh, when you use the VCA trim in the center section uh, it's not affected right so next we're gonna have a look at this um, matrix router here which really is the heart of the console in a lot of ways um, basically anything that you press the float on gets routed up to the matrix router and then you can send it to anywhere on the desk either internally or out 
um, to external outboard gear through the patch bay. Um, so if I press one, sorry, one on here, um, that's going to be fed out to uh, group one on the patch bay, which I can send out to either my door if I'm recording or when I'm mixing that can go to a, uh, a compressor or an EQ and then be returned back on another channel. Um, you can also send it to the main left and right two bus. So once it's been disconnected by the float, you can reconnect it, but also be able to um, send parallel signals to other places. So for example, I've got um, my A, B, C, D uh, sub mix buses that are routed from uh, 22, sorry, 21 and 22 are my, is my drum bus, my 1176 Pultec combo. Uh, then the next one I think is my Fairchild and 1073s. And then I've got another C and D bus of other compressor EQ combinations and they all return back on these um, stereo modules over here. So yeah, it's a really powerful little um, piece of kit to quickly route to um, different places and yeah, cool little thing, very cool. Right, oh, next we'll have a look at the group VCAs. Uh, so they are these um, eight faders in the center of the console. Uh, these aren't channels, they're just group VCAs. So basically any other channel on the desk is assignable uh, to any one of these VCAs. So um, these little turn wheels here, if I turn them all to one, all the way through, and then I bring up my set my mix, say these are my drums or whatever, then this becomes my group VCA for the whole drum bus, um, which is a really cool thing to have. You can also cascade these. So if I, on the group VCA, if I choose one, sorry, two, then it'll filter down into two as well. So that'll be like a sub master, and then this will be a, a master group VCA. Um, another good thing to use these for is to assign uh, channels that are far away uh, on the on the console so you don't have to get up and down. So I've got my uh, stereo returns for uh, my sub mix buses coming back on the first four because they are right on the other end of the console so I can access them right here just by assigning them to there. What one of these channel strips looks like when we pull it out. They're all modular, so they can come in and out. They can be hot plugged while you're in a session. If one goes down, you can pull another one in without having to turn the console off, which is awesome. And then within uh, each channel, all the parts within it are modular as well. So if you lose the dynamic section on one card, you can pull out the dynamic section or a spare dynamic section and just slot it in so you don't lose the whole functionality. Just pull it straight out. All right, so here, as you can see, all of these cards, you just pull a screw out the back and then you can pull that whole card out and replace it just with the, just an edge connector there. Uh, so you've got the preamp section here, the transformer, uh, this is the VCA card here, that all comes out. Uh, this is the dynamic section. Uh, here is the EQ filter section. Up the top, you got your group card. And then here, this is the logic card. And then if you've got the total, total recall um, addition, that would go on top um, and plug into these ports here. Um, as you can see, we've had it recapped all the electrolytics um, in a lot of these channels have been updated and replaced and even some of the the polys and ceramics have been updated some of the line drivers as well we've put in you know bare browns and opa stuff it's slightly better than some of the stock stuff that it came with 
um, but yeah the electrolytics is definitely worth worth doing all right and uh, when it goes back in there's uh these little guides here so there's three pins and three holes you line them up put it in bob's your uncle best to do this when it's not on if you can avoid having the console on when you're doing it because you can sometimes drag the traces on the back of the module against um, metallic parts and they short out so yeah, best to turn off the bucket that you're working on at least